Hello, I'm Donna Friesen. We're all missing things about the way life used to be. Thousands of people, of course, have lost loved ones to COVID-19, and for them, life will never be the same. Others are yearning for just a bit of what life was like before the pandemic, something to lift our spirits, something to rally around. Sports is what does that for millions of people. Nelson Mandela said sports has the power to inspire, the power to unite people in a way that little else does. Sports, he said, can create hope where once there was only despair. We could all use some hope right now. Professional sports are working out ways to come back. Fans can't be there in person, but preparations are underway to drop the first puck and throw the first pitch in this COVID era. Eric Sorensen looks at how and when the games will begin again. In golf, safe distance is easy when there's no gallery. Expansive fairways and golfers don't have to get close to each other. A round of golf for charity went off without a hitch or a cough. And so the world of sports is getting back in the swing, pandemic or not. Car racing naturally separates drivers from one another. NASCAR gave us our first look at a major North American event in front of an empty grandstand. Baseball, already up and running in South Korea, can also be played with limited contact. But when European soccer kicked off once more, one thing became clear. You can't play contact sports without the contact. It looks and certainly sounds different in a cavernous stadium. Basically, you have to have some integrity to the game for sure. Bob Stelic is a veteran of sports marketing. Well, there might be certainly a little emotion missing without having fans there, but I think guys will, will get used to it. Uh, I think they'll play hard. They'll, they'll be proud, you know, play for pride. In a society surrounded by a highly infectious coronavirus, the challenge is to cocoon the players and their games from the threat of contracting or spreading the disease. The NBA wants to pull its gargantuans from exposed public service to cloister the entire league at Disney in Florida. The NHL, in its own way, plans to isolate in two hub cities. League Commissioner Gary Bettman says the competition comes second. I want to make clear that the health and safety of our players, coaches, essential support staff in our communities are paramount. Health protocols will differ, but the basics are, first, the outside world where COVID-19 is present. A transition zone where athletes and key officials will be tested repeatedly and verified to be COVID-free. And then the inner sanctum, where the games are played. It's hoped in a pristine setting and close contact in competition is allowed and justified. With full-on contact, something frowned upon everywhere else, is there a risk? Yes, but it can be managed, no says this epidemiologist. World, we have to just get used to living with some uncertainty and, and a little bit of risk while we're in the pre vaccine era of, of COVID-19. If there is uh, a safe way to do it and if the public health authorities deem that it's something that uh, can be done safely, uh, I think it's a completely acceptable thing to start back up again. Disease specialists warn that if the virus spreads on a team, it could force a shutdown. But the aim is to prevent that. There may indeed be cases of COVID-19, but, says one NBA insider, the plan is to respond swiftly before it spreads and carry on. The NBA would then isolate and quarantine that player, continue the daily testing protocols. They would have no stoppage of play. Bob Stelic says the leagues can't allow themselves to be paralyzed by a single COVID-19 case. The point right now is if someone does test positive, they can't shut the whole operation down. They have to be able to extricate that person and isolate that person. So, I mean, just like everywhere else, they're being extra careful. What we'll be missing, of course, are the fans the excitement they bring, and the billions they spend. The spectacle just one year ago, basketball diehards squished together in Toronto, no fear of contagion. Now it just seems like a bygone era. How long will this stark new normal last, and at what cost? The three most valuable sports franchises in the country are right here, down the street at the Rogers Centre where the Toronto Blue Jays play, and here at the Scotiabank Arena, the Toronto Raptors and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now the three Toronto teams, along with the Montreal Canadiens, are the only teams in the country valued at more than $1 billion, so a lot of money is at stake. It's estimated that the big leagues involved stand to lose $5.5 billion because of what happened this spring. More than $3 billion is from the fans. That's the loss of tickets and food and merchandise. And the other $2 billion is from TV revenue. 
Now, they may not get the fans back, but there is money to be recovered from the television revenue, one reason why they want to come back this summer. I don't think any business model could have anticipated this. Richard Powers studies sports and business. He says without fans in the stands, thousands of jobs have been lost. And minor league and amateur sports are really suffering as the public stops buying tickets in communities everywhere. They're very dependent on, you know, literally bums and seats. There are thousands of jobs at risk here. Many of those won't come back without spectators in the seats. But he says big leagues will get by because millions will tune in to see Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby or Pascal Siakam and LeBron James fight for a championship, even in the wrong season. The leagues, that means they keep their television revenues, they keep their sponsorship revenues. You know, they're taking a significant hit, as we mentioned, with the lack of spectators. But at least with the sponsors and the TV contracts, they can make something out of what appears to be nothing right now. The luckiest of the big league sports is American football. The pandemic arrived out of season, and the biggest enterprise in all of sport plans to restart on time in September. Major League Baseball is planning its season by playing half the usual number of games. Historically, a day at the ballpark was always seen as an escape from the bigger problems of the world. The national pastime gets on the bond wagon. $800 million is the contribution of baseball fans to the bond drive. During the Second World War, a very different crisis, baseball was viewed as indispensable to the morale of Americans. So Major League Ball kept going during the war. There may not be quite that sentimentality today, but big-time sports are an important part of the fabric of society, that we're in this together. And as the Toronto Raptors proved last year, sports can unify a lot of people around a bouncing ball. Sport is a significant part of our culture, and we miss that. And uh, if we can get the leagues going, I think people will really appreciate that. It'll give them something to look forward to. And at a time like this, we need all the help we can get to get through this, this pandemic. For fans, there is a rhythm and a continuity in the sports calendar. You start the year and hockey and basketball are in full swing. You have big events like the Super Bowl. And then there's curling for some fans, March Madness for others. And here comes the Masters. Baseball starts the playoffs. All kinds of events start up in the spring, except this year, a black hole. Everything disappeared. Now the attempt is to begin that rhythm again. Not just baseball in the summertime or the CFL, but basketball playoffs in July, the Indy 500 in August. As the NFL begins, so will the Kentucky Derby. And how about the Stanley Cup in the autumn? And some sports will not happen till next year. March Madness, Wimbledon, soccer's Euro Championship, and the Tokyo Olympics. The impact on sports will be felt for at least another year. And who knows how soon the crowds can come back to watch and cheer, whether it's professional or youth and amateur sports. And playing the games, they will be a matter of trial and error and risk, as long as the pandemic lasts.